begin our practice. So what I have here is a paper, a pad of paper. And what I'm using here is the foray paper that I talked about earlier from Canada. This is going to be my warm-up paper. Um, I'm keeping it in the pad uh, just because this is a warm-up sheet. Uh, I've got my number four and my number six brushes, as I mentioned earlier. I've got two containers of water, which I'm going to move a little bit off to the side so I don't spill them. Um, I'm just going to move everything a little bit closer to me so I can reach. Um, and I think to start with, I'm just going to use the number four round brush. So I'm just going to put the number six to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water and I'm just going to kind of swirl my brush into the water to get it fully wet. And the nice part about doing that is, is it also makes the tip of the brush a lot pointier and um, really kind of helps the bristles keep their shape. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to choose a color. It doesn't really matter. And the first thing we're going to do to warm up is that we're going to do some drops. And so, and drops and dots is what I want to call this part. So I'm just going to load my brush. And so I've just put some paint onto the brush. And then because this is a fine tip round brush, to do dots, I'm just going to very lightly press the paintbrush down onto the page. And one of the things to know about me is I am not a precise artist by any means. And I don't mind things being a little bit messy. If you're um, the kind of person, I always like to call you guys type A's, that like everything to be perfect, you're probably going to want to experiment a lot more than this um, to get things exactly how you like them. Uh, it's also a matter of practicing how much paint you have on your brush and then also how much water you have on your brush to pick up the paint with. And obviously it's going to change the color or the consistency of the paint. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's also going to depend on how hard you brush, you press the brush against the paper. But not only is it how hard you press the brush against the paper, it is also the angle at which you do it. So you could do it straight up and down. You can do it at the side or you can do it all the way down. And so these are some things that I would recommend that you try just to see what it does doing different things with your brush, okay? And when I say different things, I mean the angle at which you're holding the brush, just try making some different marks, or the pressure in which you push with. So if I push really hard, it's gonna give me some different marks. Now, the paper I'm using is cold press paper. If you're using hot press paper, it's gonna be a lot smoother. Your paint is going to look different when it lands on the paper. And I think I have a little bit just off to the side here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it real quick for you. Oh. This is a little bit less of a piece, I think. So let me just try this. So this is a little less hot um, cold press, but what you'll notice is, is it covers the paper a lot more evenly and a lot smoother look. So this one's kind of got some bubbles and some areas where there's white parts in it because the brush isn't touching all the way down onto the paper properly. That's because of the texture in the paper, okay? So you want to practice doing some dots. So just add some dots. Okay. And my dots are coming out more teardrop shaped and I'm okay with that. But if, if I wanted to do perfect dots, I might, as I mentioned earlier, I have this skewer I might want to try and somehow put some paint onto a palette or dip it into the half pan, load the end of the brush so that I get some on it, and then I could do dots this way also. So, and I could use either end of the skewer. So I could also use the sharp end. I'm just wetting it first, dipping it into the paint, and then doing some dots that way too. So it really depends on the look that you're going for. I'm going to rinse the end of the brushes off. Oh, sorry, the skewer's off. 
it depends on the look that you're going for. Now me, um, as I mentioned, I tend to be a little bit more of an abstract artist. And so I don't care about things looking absolutely perfect. And honestly, in nature, things don't look perfect. So the next uh, shape that we're going to practice doing is a petal. And I think for this one, I'm going to use a blue. This is an ultramarine blue that I'm doing. And so I've just wet my brush. I've loaded the brush. And for a petal, especially when I'm using a round brush, I like to work from left to right. That's because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you may want to do the opposite. And I'm just going to touch my brush, the tip of the brush down very lightly. I'm going to press with the brush. I'm going to pull it and lift at the same time. And that's going to make a petal. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to tip, put the tip of the brush down, push the brush down, drag it a little bit and lift. And that will give me petals. And I can make the petals as long as I want. If I want a fatter petal, I would press harder or use a bigger brush. Okay, so this is how you make a petal shape with a round brush. You could also do them vertically. So I'm just adding a little bit more water and so I could do it vertically also. I'm trying to do it sideways a little bit so that you guys can see it better. And so this is a way that you could make petals. And I'm sure you've noticed by now, but when I first put the brush down on the paper, the color is very saturated. And as I continue to make marks without going back for more paint, the paint will get lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's a technique to be aware of that if I want something to be a lot lighter in the background, I can either get some of the paint off of my brush or I can keep painting or adding more water until it becomes the lighter shade that I want. So there's a definite difference in how the color will appear according to whether you've just dipped it into the paint or not. Okay, so that's how to do petals. Leaves are very similar. There's a couple of ways you can do leaves. Um, I'm gonna pick up a green color for a leaf. Okay. And the way that you can do leaves is I could do a very nice long leaf the same way that I just did that, okay? The petals, same, same thing. This is a color called Cascade Green. This is one of my favorite colors, okay? And I just broke my own water rule. <laughs> I just put my green in my pink water, so I'm gonna switch these around. Okay, and here's some more leaves. Okay, so I could do a leaf like that. The other way that I've seen people do leaves is they've made them double-sided. And what I mean by that is I'm going to do a mark and I'm slightly curving it just a little bit. And then to get the line down the middle, I would do a mark down the other side. And then that might leave, say, a vein space in the middle if I wanted to do it like that. I tend to not do my leaves with the vein space in the middle. I tend to be more of a, I'm the kind of person that likes all of their stuff completely filled in. Okay, so here goes this one. That one's not too shabby. And then if, if you don't like the line down the middle, then just fill it in. Just make it skinny enough that you can still see it. So, and again, because I'm using cold pressed paper, the edges may come out not perfectly straight sometimes. And that's a reflection of either my brush is getting too dry or um, it's the angle at which I'm holding the brush that I'm not having it at a good angle against the paper. And so the bristles are actually bumping over that texture. Uh, again, it's kind of a practice thing. Um, it's taken me quite a long time to get a hang of how much pressure to use. Um, and that's why I do recommend doing this practice activity first, just to see how you want your leaves to look. I've also seen people do it halfway and then come from the other side so that they can get it perfect with a tip on the end of it. I suck at that, so that's not how I do mine. But I would encourage you to just play and practice with some different things just to see what's comfortable for you. Is it more comfortable for you to do leaves vertically or horizontally? I can go either way. I don't mind. But this is what I mean about leaving it how you want it and you can kind of play with it and touch it up a little bit 
But ideally, the idea behind watercolour is um, for you to get a look that you like. Now, these are awfully saturated. So the thing to know about me is I am a very bright coloured person. I love fully saturated, deep, bright colours. Um, if you're more into the watercolour -y look, probably, and what I mean by that is the lighter pastel shades, you want to use more water on your brush or in your paint mix. Kind of like this, okay? So it'll come out lighter, and because I'm using that cold pressed paper, when it dries, it's going to settle into the wrinkles or the valleys in the pattern in the paper from when it was made, and that's what's gonna give it this kind of textural look. Now, if you don't like that look, you definitely wanna try hot pressed paper. Um, and the other reason um, I was going to mention before is that in using the difference between hot press and cold press paper is also how much water the paper can hold. Um, what they, they do hold different amounts. And again, it's one of those things that you kind of have to um, experiment with to see it. So what I've done here is I've just put some water down and now I'm going to load some paint on my brush. And I'm just going to hold that brush and dip it into the water that's on the page and you'll watch the shape fill. And you can go from each end and notice how it's pushing itself away. This is created by surface tension with the paint, but it's something that you can play with. You can use it to your advantage or it may not do what you want it to do. Uh, and what you can do is just rinse your brush off and you can mix them together if you want to. It depends on the look and if of how you want the paint to appear on the paper. So you can let them bleed naturally into one another, okay? So I'm going to do another water leaf. And thank goodness I have this light on because I can actually see where the water is when I'm looking at the page at an angle. And then I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna drop it in on one end, okay? And it will, over time, slowly seep out but the color can also only go so far. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. And it's it's usually based on the amount of water that you have on your brush. Um, so for example, if I took some more of this blue color that I had up here and I dropped it in the other side, some colors tend to spread better than others. It's also again, based on how much water I have on my brush. And I've got some bubbles in there. I'm just trying to get them out. And they will pop over time. I'm just rinsing my brush off. See if I can stab it out of there. There we go. Okay, so what happens if you put too much color down or you decide you don't like something? You can wet, wet your brush, wash it off, okay? And kind of scrape it against the glass a little bit to get it a little bit more dry. And then you can just dip your brush into the paint and roll it a tiny bit and it will pull the paint off. So that is one technique you can do. The other technique you can do is to take, say, a towel. So I've just got an old towel here and I can dip it in to get some of the color off. Now, depending on what kind of paint you're using and the saturation of it, you may not be able to get it all off. Um, it will likely still leave a mark on the paper. Um, that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately, and it's not able to be undone. Okay, and the last kind of shape I want to talk about is circles, okay? Um, I think I'll make these about purple. I feel like doing some purple. Okay, so circles can go many different ways. Probably the easiest way to do a circle is to do half and then the other half. Now, notice how it's fatter on one side and skinnier on the other. The other thing that I could choose to do is I could choose to hold my brush very lightly and do kind of like a very light outline of a circle. And then I could make it fatter by coming back in. And as I said, I'm a perfectly imperfect person, so I don't make mine perfect. So there's lots of different ways. So if you're comfortable doing a circle all the way around, you could certainly try that. My circles never come out as circles. They always come out <laughs> as more ovals, I guess, really. Um, and I'm okay with that. I kind of like it. I think it has more of a hand-drawn look. If you wanted to do a perfect circle, I would definitely draw it out, like trace around something or hand-draw it in and then paint over it. 
Um, and what I would use to draw it in with is either a aquarel pencil in the same color, or I would use just a regular pencil, a straight up pencil. But again, it all depends on how heavy you press your brush against the paper. And notice the way that I'm holding my brush. So here I'm holding it very lightly. And then if I press down, obviously the line is gonna get thicker. And it also leaves a little bit more paint down towards the end because I've squished the bristles down and I've loaded more paper off of the brush onto the paper. So I just want to encourage you to take some time um, and make some marks, practice making some dots, practice making some petal shapes, practice making some leaf shapes and some circle shapes um, and any other shapes you feel like. Uh, you could do a triangle, square, rectangle, whatever makes you happy, uh, stars. <laughs> um, and just have a practice. So this is a great warm up activity is to think about the kinds of shapes that you're going to be using in uh, your piece. The other thing that you, this will help you have a think of is also some of the shapes or the colors that you're going to be using. Um, and it's just good to have a practice with those. I also generally tend to keep a practice sheet like this off to my side so that as I'm painting, let's pretend this is my real piece. As I'm painting my real piece um, and I'm not 100% confident or sure of what I want to do, I will practice on my little practice sheet first until I feel comfortable and then I'll come in and do the real piece as it is. Um, and so that's your warm-up activity, your practice activity.